So again, with another informative session, we have Oliver Leitz, the CEO of NanoCosmos, who's going to guide us through interactive live streaming with ultra-low latency. Reach your audience on any platform. We're getting some of that today. We're getting some more options on how to reach them on any platform, and that is good. Uh, at the end of this, one of you will win free setup and use of a NanoStream server on your own private instance for free. Set up and use of one NanoStream cloud for one month, which includes a half day of consulting. There's a value of $750. That's a big prize. Stay till the end. There will be random drawing for one winner. Take us away. Oliver. Thanks, Troy. Yeah, hi, everybody. My name is Oliver Leitz. I'm the CEO and founder of NanoCosmos from Berlin, Germany. As Troy mentioned, I'd like to talk about interactive live streaming with ultra-low latency for your brand. What does it mean? That means one second end-to-end -end latency from the camera to the viewer with worldwide delivery. So recently we were part of a roundtable discussion hosted by Streaming Media. There were a lot of, dis a lot of discussion about that, a lot of questions. It's really a hot topic, uh, topic, as you know. And I'm eager to learn about your questions and use cases and challenges for low latency live streaming. So in this session we are going to talk about the challenges of ultra low latency live streaming and the solutions we can provide from NanoCosmos with our NanoStream products. So where do we come from? We have a long experience in product development for video encoding and streaming for many, many years. And today I would like to highlight our browser-based solutions for low latency live playback which is H5 Live, the low latency live player, and for live encoding, which is WebRTC Live, both running in the browser. So I'm taking a background. What is latency and why is it there? Live streaming requires basically three components, as you know, encoding, streaming services, and playback. And for real-time interactive applications, the latency for this application needs to be really low, ultra-low, with around one second latency. In current systems, the playback part is actually the highest challenge to solve. Um, you probably all know that this is really, really hard to solve. And why is that? Because of the, in the current situation, um, as the flash player goes away, Delivery is being done with HTTP-based file segments, like an HLS and Dash. And the file segments are rather large. They create large buffers and long latency on the player side. This usually works well for OTT applications and live broadcast. But for interactive applications, this is simply unacceptable. So what, what values do we get? As you know, HLS and Dash can get very high, up to 60 seconds and more end to end. Flash bear goes, goes away end to end. So we, and for the uh, real-time interactive applications, you need to be in the ultra-low latency area, which is below two or three seconds end to end. So we needed to create a solution for that, and we did. We created a product which is called H5 Live, NanoStream H5 Live for interactive live streaming. It's a technology for delivery and playback with ultra-low latency, and is based on a server component and on a player component. The player component works on all browsers based on HTML5 on desktop platforms and on mobile platforms, and even on iOS with our unique low latency HLS mode. It's very easy to use. So with a, just a couple of lines of JavaScript code, you can add H5 Live playback to your own web page. Very easy. What is unique? We on the one hand, we developed a new repackaging technology, but still based on web standards. It uses advanced buffer control to keep latency really low, even in bad network situations. 
it's completely un independent from HTTP-based file segments and gob sizes. And it's very lightweight on the server side and also on the player side. So it scales really well and creates a cost-effective solution which is easy to integrate and perfect for interactive live streaming. So I've talked about the live playback part, and of course you need a live encoder as well. What do we do there? You can still use existing RTMP encoders. For example, our NanoStream SDKs, which are available on all platforms. However, if you would like to have a browser-based solution for plug-in-free live encoding, you can use our WebRTC Live product, which is also easy to use and is also unique because it connects the peer-to-peer -peer approach of WebRTC to the live streaming mm. environments. So with the combination then on the one hand on the encoder side of WebRTC and on the player side with the H5 Live player, you have a browser-based solution for creating interactive live video applications. Also the encoder is easy to embed. Some lines of JavaScript code are sufficient to connect the live stream to your audience. So interactive live streaming creates a lot of new use cases and business opportunities. Some customer use cases I can show you here. Live meetings like enterprise webcasts or screen sharing or entertainment applications like auctions, gambling, or 360 VR, which require interactivity. And many, many more, of course. So we spoke about the live encoding and the live playback part. And how do we connect both parts together? To provide the best performance in terms of latency and scalability, we created NanoStream Cloud, which creates a encoding, streaming, and playback solution for ultra-low latency delivery worldwide. NanoStream is a great choice for creating interactive live streaming applications. It's a cross-platform family, available on iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac, and also now plug-in free in the browser. So you can quickly roll out your own products and services, either on our NanoStream cloud or on your own <coughs> servers, sorry. So interactive live streaming is available now from NanoCosmos. Thank you very much for your attention. We have a booth here. I'm happy to meet you there. However, we need to leave already quite soon, 2.30. So if you have any questions, also feel free, feel free to ask now. Thank okay, you very much. Um, that was a quick one. You got any questions? Um, let me know, and I will run around with the mic. All right, guys, you had a lot of questions before. Uh, I'm I sure can, you're still I curious. Sorry, I've got to get you on the video. OK, hi, thanks. I may have missed it, but how do you deliver the content? Is that you know something that can be delivered over a CDN, or is it only to your protocol? We, it's our protocol, so you need to have something running on the edge servers. If you're running on the CDN, we work with CDN partners, but also have our own cloud services available. So if you work with existing CDNs, which do HTTP-based delivery, you already lose the latency, so you cannot get it back again. So you need to have a con continuous live stream running from the origin servers to the edge servers, which needs to have a really low latency. And from there, we deliver that with our client server. I'm sorry? You were working with some CDNs. Yes. Which are those? There are some, some partners the, um, uh, different, in different uh, industries, but we can uh, okay. tell you some details in a personal meeting. Um, so the, the delivery protocol between the edge servers and the player is um, based on different standards dependent on the browser which you are connecting to. The iOS version is based on standard HLS, so with the uh, benefit that you don't need to have the file chunks, and that's why you need to have some specific CDN support for doing that. Anybody else? Yep, yeah, yeah, good, good. Good, oh, and another one over there, I'll get to you. Actually, you just inspired the question while you were speaking. So 
I know it's really difficult to create a live streaming seed in, in general, much less handling RTC. Um, so you mentioned edge and origin provisioning. Do you have like metrics on how fast you can provision the streams, uh, even if your end-to-end -end latency is amazing? Yeah, it's uh, our approach is to um, enable instant live streams, so you don't need to provision that in advance before, and to really enable large audiences, not only on the player side, but also on the ingest side, because many of our customer applications are many-to-many -many applications, like user-generated content, like Periscope, or things like that. They need to instantly be able to fire up uh, streams and go live. Okay, over here. Are you guys compatible with all browsers? Yes, all HTML5 browsers. So we work on Chrome, Safari, Firefox, uh, with the specific HLS mode, Safari on iOS as well. But we even work on IE and Edge. Back to uh, the MSE compatible IEs. Uh, for IE7 on, yeah, what is it, IE11 on Windows 7, we have a flash fallback, so. Over here now, Oliver. Okay, the question I have is, uh, do, does this work with, say, VLC player? Because when you're sort of messing with the HLS spec, I'm just kind of wondering if some of the non-browser players would be able to work with this. Yeah, it's a good question. I had that uh, already asked before today. So the, it should work. I'm not 100% sure now, but be, there is a be, um, the benefit of using our player because we have this buffer control feedback between the client and the server. So we add some more value to the uh, plain stream. We basically would be able to also get a plain MP4 URL to play it on any device and set up boxes or so. But you, of course, need some, some uh, kind of an intelligent logic to control the buffer loop. But the basic uh, fundament is, is based on comp compatible standards. Uh, one more question. Uh, the RTC player component, you said it works in all browsers. Is it always plug-inless? Uh, what about the non-compliant RTC browsers? Do you need something extra to make it work? Yeah, let me uh, get back to um, another slide here. So. Where is it? Yeah. So we, we use WebRTC only in the encoder side because uh, for playback it has this, these restrictions that it doesn't scale well and it doesn't work on all browsers, doesn't work on Safari, on iOS and all the browsers. So, uh, and also the implementation for large scale deployments is very challenging and doesn't integrate with existing architectures. So we needed to create something which works and, and connects to existing streaming environments. And, and scales better and is uh, compatible to all browsers. So WebRTC on the encoder side and H5 Live on the player side are different technologies. Okay, do I see any more hands? Any more hands, anyone? Not missing anything, all right. Well, it looks like Captain Oliver has brought this plane in well ahead of schedule, so that's always nice. And now we have our drawing. Who in the room? is going to win free setup and use of a nano stream server on their own private instance, $750 value. Oliver, uh, first name, second one's the backup. This one? Yeah. It's Jeffrey Heimbold. Jeffrey, is he still in the room? Jeffrey, you're the winner. Congratulations. All right, we'll have to talk to All right round of applause everyone for Oliver. Um, and we will Thank have you very much.